Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Star Ocean. Last time we finally made our way into the uh, abandoned mine here, which is the cave in Mount Metox, after finding it at the beginning of the game. Now we're finally going to explore it, and last time we explored the, uh, the entire first floor. Now, I can't remember if we found these bloodworms before, but these ones are pretty powerful. Or not. These guys are also immune to earth elemental, so you can't uh, use the Dwarven Sword against them. Uh, that's the sword that we found last time. Now, in this floor, we basically take the, uh, the clockwise approach, starting with 9 o'clock. So head left first, and then go up, and then over to the right in that order. There we go. Here we get another Ori Calicon, which will help. Ah, these are the guys that we haven't met up with. And these guys are weak as sin. <laughs> yeah, some of the enemies around here are a lot more powerful at lower level when you're at lower lower levels. Uh, right now, you know, we're high, as high as we need to be and we're geared up enough. You know, technically my character's all level 28. If Radix was level 28 as well, that would be a better, more accurate portrayal of how difficult this area would be, but with the amount of gear I've picked up from item creation recently, yeah, they don't stand a chance. Ow. Now, Millie as a character is a pure healer, so she's never going to contribute, you know, to the battle in terms of creating damage, so unlike uh, Joshua, I don't really need her to be effective. I need her to be able to heal me when I need it and do that effectively. Now, she won't be able to do that quite yet, but uh, she definitely will get there, especially if I keep her in my party. And basically, by the, from the time I get her, she's in my party the majority of the time. And if she isn't, I'll throw Joshua in and train up some of my other characters or something like that. But in my last playthrough, I think she actually ended the game at a higher level than Radix because I turned off Radix's training. Oh, where is it? There it is. Another rune metal. And I left hers on because she was trying to catch up in levels and she eventually uh, surpassed them. Of course, we got a helmet there that I won't be using because we've got uh, much better ones already. Yeah, that... Uh, you, uh, the tech used by uh, Tinnick there was his Hailstorm, something I uh, equipped on him last time. So yeah, that's quite effective and will be very nice for him. It's one of the few he has that hits more than twice, for whatever reason. Now we want to go up, but we could we could fight a battle first, that would work. Come on, Tinnick, protect Millie. That's your job. You protect Millie. Yeah, that's Cure Light, I think. Or, no, that must have been an Antidote. Because I was poisoned. She actually used it in a battle, I'm surprised. That almost never happens. Go up here, we hit another dead end room, which of course means search for Orichalcon. Nice. I think there's only one more left, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, as you can see, we just got these characters, Tinnick and Marvel and even Millie, and we're already basically as powerful as my other team, and my other team is over 10 levels higher. So yeah, you can see some of these characters are really, really good. Iria at this point in the game is not very good, so she's not contributing a lot in the other fight. I'm petrified. Well, whatever. Kill him. Heal after battle. Normally I would go out of my way to preserve how much someone had leveled up, but Radix gets more than enough experience over the course of the game, as I've said before. So I'm not particularly worried for him. Uh, I think Millie gained another level, did she? Do I have enough for another effort? No, I do not. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do that. Boy. There we go. Level up training. Normally I wouldn't do that, but uh, I just... I want her to gain levels faster and get her kind of on par with everybody else. There we go. That, and I thought if I only put, you know, one set of points in, I would have had more than enough to gain another uh, level for training for her. Anyway, here's a save point, which if you're, you know, about level 26 to 30-ish, and you're coming in through here without doing item creation, 
yeah, you probably want to, uh, you're, you're probably going to want to save here. I don't need to because this boss is not particularly challenging. Yeah, I have no idea what he said. doesn't matter. Mind you of someone we saw in the battle arena already. Yeah, he's not particularly frightening at, uh, you know, lower levels. He can be. But you know, with Millie to back me, you know, you're pretty much fine. If you recruit Joshua, you can come through here at like level 25, level 26 and beat him. It's a difficult fight, but you can do it with Joshua to heal you. That's some good money there. And pretty much the same amount of experience I've gotten from every normal encounter in here. But uh, yeah, so you can actually do that. Uh, if you don't have Joshua, it's a really difficult fight, if not impossible from what I've uh, experienced. We got a mind bomb, which I don't need. Some more gear. We get an astral sword. And the audio glitched out again. Let's see, is that at the bottom where it should be? It is. Yeah, this uh, is a two handed weapon for Seus. What else did I pick up? Question mark cards, which I will be taking a look at. Everything else is junk. One more thing to do here pick up a piece of mithril. Alright, so, well, I'll run out here on screen, why not? Not that far. Depending on, of course, how many battles I get. And I'm petrified again. Not helping game. Okay, two people are petrified. Time to uh, start, uh, no. Where is it? Time to start uh, healing people before I get to a point where I can't do anything. And that's the phone. That's not helping. Uh, let's see. Okay, one second. Okay, looks like we're back to interruptions every video again. Okay, let's uh, heal you. Yeah, you definitely want to bring some liquor bottles in here because they can uh, petrify you pretty easily sometimes. That was a kind of a scary fight. You can get game over in here if you like fight enough black slimes or those petrifying guys, whatever they're called, because uh, yeah, they can petrify pretty much all your characters, save for one, and then they'll stun lock the remaining character into submission until they either die or get petrified. There we go. Just figured I'd show you the way out here. It's not like it's all that difficult to find, but, uh, eh, I'll be nice. One shot, two of the enemies, the other one takes, like, five. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how those, uh, smaller guys manage to sneak in here. Maybe they kind of, like, evolve over time. There's the same stairs that we came down with. So, like, maybe they start off as green ones, and then if they stay alive long enough and get exposed to sunlight, they turn into the, uh, the yellow ones that we found in the desert in Astral. Oh, we learned a spell. Nice. Very nice. That's a very important spell. No, why do we keep going to music? Yeah, we learned Dispel, which removes abnormal statuses except poison, if I recall correctly, for whatever reason. I don't know why, but it removes paralysis and petrify and, you know, that kind of crap. But yeah, so, and then, say, the yellow ones, they get stuck in a cave for a number of years. They lose all of their pigment and they become black and then they get more powerful. Anyway, um, from here, we can do one of two things. We can either do the other optional dungeon or we can uh, move forward with the plot. Now... I think I'm going to go and meet you at Vaughn Castle and move forward with the plot a little bit. And then that should unlock the other uh, private actions so that I can do those again, so that I can show some of those off, because I think uh, it's probably a good idea at this point. I know I haven't really given you guys an option, because as of recording this video, the one where I asked about that hasn't even gone up yet, so... Oops. I always ask these questions in videos and then, you know don't post the videos soon enough to get answers and make up my own decision, so I don't know. Anyway, so I'll just uh, meet you there at Vaughn. Okay, we're back. Now, one thing to note on the way is uh, I sold a bunch of excess junk off screen. I also picked up some additional aqua berries, blackberries, uh, liquor bottles, 
I did this in Portmus because that was one of the easier places to do it. I also uh, sold a bunch of junk. One thing oops, that I haven't done, though, is I haven't identified all the stuff that I got while I was in the cave there, so let's do that. You get a lot of sweet syrup in this game, so if you're looking for something to heal you, um, you know, outside of battle, that's probably one of the better ones to use for it. I also picked up more spectacles, uh, also while I was in uh, uh, Portmus there. And here we get Dwarven Boots, which I will actually use. I sold the Dwarven Helmets because I'm not going to need those. The Dwarven Boots I'm going to give to characters who don't normally have access to some of the better pieces of gear. They're not all that great, but, you know, they're better than uh, the majority of things we have. You cannot use them. Um, I wouldn't expect Millie to use them. I don't think you can. I believe Ronixus can, though. Yeah, but I'm not going to use him. Anyone else? She can equip all the other Dwarven gear, except the boots. I don't get that. At all. Alright, I might as well give them to you then. Yeah! Whatever, I guess. That minimal amount of evade's not worth much. Now, the Dwarven Guards are technically... maybe better? Maybe not? It, I don't know. I prefer the Star Guards myself. I just give one to everyone and be done with it and never think about it again. Anyway, now that we've arrived back at Vaughn, let's head to the castle. I recall this is where we were supposed to go to uh, proceed. Um, shouldn't you know that the Chancellor, you know, led us through last time? Right in front of you? No? Okay, whatever. So, with uh, that being said, we get another meeting with the King. All the kings look the same, all the chancellors look the same, all the queens look the same. And yet, they never seem to recognize us. Anyway, we've done all that. Key to some ruins. The king of Astro gave us some phrases. And some hidden meaning. Told us where the entrance was. Of course we have. But we've already been to Parj Temple. Yeah, Iria's right. It's said to be on Astral Continent. It is! We've been there! You just... You're sending us on a wild goose chase. That's literally it. We get no explanation. Nothing. And now he's... If you go here, it's like, oh, so that's what we're supposed to do. Even though they never mentioned it in the dialogue. Yeah, I think, if I recall correctly, after your initial visit here, before you've heard this from him, he has this exact same line. So even before we even mentioned Harsh Temple or the Eye of Truth, he's telling you to keep it a secret, which is kind of funny. I wanted to show that off, but I forgot while I was here. That's why I went and talked to them specifically in every other uh, kingdom that I went to, hoping it was one of them and not this one. Oh well. So, our next goal is to go to uh, Parge Temple. We could do that, but we could also do another side dungeon. Now, I think the side dungeon is probably worthwhile doing, and I forgot to equip the, uh, the Dwarven Sword there, so let's do that. So, I'm going to go do that. The, uh, the other optional dungeon is actually the uh, Sylvan Ruins next to uh, Sylvan. So, I'm just going to walk there off screen, and I will uh, see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. Now, if you want to know kind of where I am, I've just passed the town of Savalance, continued to head over to the right, and of course here is the entrance. I'm not going to show the entire trip back because uh, I've already shown that before, so. Anyway, uh, on the way back, I learned uh, some new stuff from Marvel, so let's uh, take a look at those. Uh, long range, uh, we learn Thunder Orb, which, as you might guess, is pretty much the same as all the other ones, just a different element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a combination of Thunder Orb and Flare Orb on here, and leave Raven Orb there, just so that she has it. Uh, I probably won't be using it much. Uh, Millie, no, we pretty much the same stuff. I don't believe Tinek learned anything new, did he? Ah, he did. Mirror Slice. Now, <laughs> 
Mirror Slice is potentially the most rigged attack in the entire game. It has a chance of instant death. Even on bosses. <laughs> really, phone? I just started recording again. Really? Oh, that one's my friend. Okay, give me a sec. The interruption-plagued video continues. Yes. Anyway, like I was saying with Mirror Slice, very, very effective, and, well, for the main reason that you can one-shot enemies with this attack. Um, and I'm not sure what the chance is. It's hard to get a good idea. Uh, some people have experienced more luck than um, others. You know, I remember back when I was playing this game for the first time, uh, a buddy of mine was also playing it, and he showed me his file, and he was using Tinek as well, and he was getting extremely lucky with uh, the AI using Mirror Slice a lot and it working a lot, especially on certain musical bosses, which uh, we already know about, but I haven't shown off yet, so we'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, my first file, he wasn't all that effective with it, but he was still really, really good. So yeah, Mirror Slice you'll want on all the time because it is that good. Hailstorm is another one that you'll want on all the time as well. Anyway, with that being said, uh, as far as skills goes, every time I've been getting enough for effort, I've been putting into effort with all three of these uh, newer characters. Might as well uh, do these guys as well. Not flip. There we go. Eventually, I'll start putting a bunch of points into things like Gale and stuff to increase my stats, but uh, I want to get effort maxed out first. Once I do that, then everyone will put all those other points in. Now Millie, I've been doing the same thing with. She's a little higher on effort right now because she spent less time dicking around doing other things. And uh, yeah, but I haven't put anything into motor mode yet, so she's still a little slow on the casting. Eventually, once I finish effort, she'll be working on that and Gale and some other stat raising uh, techs next. Uh, there's not a lot else that I want her to learn. I will be using her for alchemy, potentially, if I feel the need, but as you can see, all the techs are pretty expensive now, so I probably won't, if unless I absolutely have to. There's other ways around it. Uh, the other thing I might use her for is compounding, which again, I will max all those things out anyway, so I could use anybody for compounding, and from what I recall, it doesn't use any specific talent. Not that I really use compounding to begin with, but if I were to, you know, I would probably end up, you know, using her or anybody else. Whoever maxes out those first. I don't think there's anything else that she's particularly useful at doing right now. Uh, another one that you'll want to work on for your mages are, is piety, or however you pronounce that, because it increases intelligence. So almost, I don't have any points left. So I'll put one point in. I don't even have one point. So yeah. Anyway, with that being said, uh, I'm pretty much prepped up and uh, ready to go there. Uh, same party as before, and pretty much the same setup. Now, in this area, there may be items to get with the pickaxe, but I don't actually know. As we kind of go through it, I may throw the pickaxe on and mine some of the crystals, but I'm not going to go and check out every single wall in this area because I don't really need any more ore anyway, and I just... It's far too time consuming because this is one of the largest dungeons in the entire game and I don't have the patience to go through and search every single tile on every wall to find different ores. Let's see, I got a new battle suit so I'm going to give that to him. I'm not sure if I got that last time or if I just took that off of, yeah I took that off of uh, Iria when I got the mithril there. Unfortunately Tinek cannot use that. Now, so pretty much Marl, Tinnik are set up the same way, Mental Rings, uh, Feet Symbols. Uh, you've got, Millie has the Emerald, I also gave her the Stun Half, which actually reduces Dizzy Time, which is kind of like those stars, the Stun Time. Uh, mainly earlier on, so she'd have a chance to run away. Uh, the other thing you can use that's quite effective is the uh, Magical Mist, so you have an increased chance of running away. That could be useful as well. There's not a lot of things that are really good for mages at this stage in the game, uh, other than maybe, you know, try emblems. But uh, 
So yeah, for now, I'm just going to kind of leave her like that because I don't have anything better to give her. Um, my other characters don't particularly matter right now because they're not prepped. So yeah, um, one other thing of note is because of the odd number of characters we get because Radix cannot be removed from the party as far as I know at any time, even after you've completed the main game, I won't really be using Renexus at all because I have enough character slots in my active party for Radix and three others. And I'm just going to kind of try and get everyone to the same level and then decide whether or not I will just continue with the new party that I haven't really shown off much of yet for the rest of the game, or if I'll throw a couple people back in. At some point I'll show off different skills, but I think, uh, you know, I may or may not. I'll have to think about it. But Ronixis probably won't get any showtime, which is kind of unfortunate because he is one of the main characters uh, of this game because he's one of the few required, like him, Iria, Radix, and Millie are all required. The other four that you could recruit are all optional. And of course, there's the four I have plus the three that I didn't recruit. So yeah, um, for now, he's not going to get any showtime. I may show him off briefly. Uh, I should probably show him in at least one battle, but uh, he really just, he's not effective at all. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Anyway, with that being said, that's going to do it for this episode of Let's Play Star Ocean. Next time, we will go through this very long dungeon and hopefully not get lost too much because I don't have this place completely memorized, but uh, we'll try. So yeah, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.